Hello, I'm kinda sick, so forgive me if this doesn't make too much sense, but I'd like to talk about data-driven games in Unity. Imagine you're making a Japanese-style RPG. You don't want to create a scene for every possible random encounter you could get into. You want to have a battle object, a battle stage, and then pass it monsters. That's what I mean by data-driven game in this case. I mean something where the scene view that you would normally use is not being used to create most of the content. Most of the content is added as the player goes through the game. So random battles pop up or things change depending on how you've got it set up. So this stands in contrast to the sort of action-y game where you would be using the scene view to build the levels. Now the problem with that, those sorts of games in Unity is while you can make them, they look like this. Because the things that you add into the game uh, are programmatically added rather than in the stage itself, you can only see them in the project view, where they're stored however you set them up. And that means that you have an issue where um, uh, you lose track of what the heck's going on. If you create 50 monsters and they're all in the monsters directory, then you've got 50 random monsters alphabetically sorted, and you're like, well, which of these were connected back to the, to the beach, um, and which of them were connected back to the forest? Uh, which of them are random encounters where? Um, if I change this one, what will it? Which stages will it will it change? And you have to try and figure that out, and you got to come up with some way to deal with it. And I'm sure that there's some super secret pro way to do all of this. Um, but generally speaking, what you need is a tool that allows you to keep track of all that crap. And there isn't one in Unity. Now there are some Node Editor tools. This is not one. Node editor tools have two major downsides. One downside is that they tend to crap out at about 200 nodes because um, they use the GUI rendering system, and that is really terrible. Uh, Unity's GUI renderer is just crappy. The other problem is that they're visual programming tools. I'm not looking to do visual programming. I'm just looking to keep track of what's connected to what. So they're, they're overly beefy. They put too much in. I don't need to see what all of the various variables are. All I need to do is know what the, what the context is. So here is my version. And since I'm not using the scene to create complicated levels, I thought, well, why not use the scene to uh, do the data, um, do all of the data stuff I need to do? So I created this map of this particular quickie little game type thing. And uh, this map shows you the place you start, the starting menu, what the options are for the starting menu, things that happen off of the uh, off of that, um, events that happen, outcomes of events, and you can continue to propagate that forever. Since it's in scene view, it uses the much much more powerful and uh, 3D rendering engine, so you can get you know a couple hundred thousand of these. Well, maybe not that many. Definitely a couple thousand of them as opposed to crapping out at about 200. And also, the much more rigid structure allows me to keep track of actually what's going on, rather than having stray uh, references pop up and screw up the, uh, the visual. And if I wanted to, I could, I could build it out. So over here, I might create another one, which would be like the character model, and then the four outfits the character has, and they'd be there in real space. You'd be able to see them. There's the character model, there's the four outfits the character has, maybe there's the weapons the characters can have. So this scene actually contains the scene in question. So there's the actual scene I built. It's very straightforward. But when I play the game, this goes away because I don't need it. It's an editor-only thing. So this is actually coexisting with the scene. If it got big, I might put it in its own scene. Um, and of course you can put it in multiple scenes and all that sort of stuff. But in essence, this allows me to quickly see exactly what I'm doing. And since these are programmatically created, they don't take up all of the space they would if they were actually being added to the game. So this menu manually uh, propagates. It. When it's added in-game live, it actually pops up as having two um, options uh, and and you can see it doesn't see you don't see any options here because that only happens during gameplay. Here you can see that there are a few that have some kind of, of vestigial element that's added into the prefab, but 
I mean, I could get rid of those if I really wanted to. Um, I think it's fine. I think it helps me remember what they are. Uh, but in short, this was really easy to do, and it allows me to start using the scene editor as a scene editor. Um, instead of popping off to use a highly inefficient GUI system to do visual programming, I do the programming I need to do, and then I keep track of it with this system. Um, it's probably not ideal. I'm sure there are other, th other ways to do it, but it has some seriously cool advantages. For example, I can go ahead and change how these are laid out whenever I want, so that if I wanted to see it slightly differently, I could. And this would allow me to, uh, to go ahead and, and make this scene view whatever I wanted it to be, whatever helped me remember it best. And of course, when you click on these, over here in the inspector that you can't see, um, they pop up. So you can see them just as if they were real objects in a, in a normal uh, scene editor view. So I could edit them. I could change what they say. I could change what the outcomes are. Uh, so in essence, it gives me all of the, the power that I normally would get from a level editing tool, except I'm not using it to edit physical levels. I'm using it to edit logical levels. That's it.